Round three! Yeah, I gotta admit, after that last game, I'm pretty pumped because I just kicked ass. It was awesome. So I'm having fun. I put this list together thinking it was just going to be a lulzy experience, much in the same way that I used that King Tiger list oh so long ago because I just wanted an excuse to paint King Tigers. And in this case, an excuse to paint Eyes Tooth. But it's actually working, and it seems to be pretty okay. But my buddy Sean here in the last round of the tourney, different Sean, has a tank company, a very beautifully painted tank company, I might add. In this scenario, we're playing Hasty Attack, where I am the defender! Yay! I only say that because they changed the rules on how you pick what stays on the board and what gets off the board. They do it by points. That's a change that has been a long time coming, because there is just so many ways you could abuse that. And really, in version 3, it, it wouldn't have helped me much at all anyway, because I have two platoons. As you can see, here are the objectives. Two of the objectives are placed by him here, and here is my objective, and my other objective. And in his objective pickup, he picks up the one on the far side, leaving just these two objectives all on the right side of the board. It's going to lead to a heavy defense of this side of the board. I don't have to defend the other side of the board, and with only two platoons, that is a hell of a boon. Because otherwise, I'm just stretched thin. He's got a lot of stuff. And almost immediately, he puts on his Reke elements and that spearhead and redeployment thing. Oh, that's that's just painful. I mean, almost turn one, he's going to be on top of that objective. I can see what he was thinking. It's right there. It's so close. It's embedded in all that concealing terrain, and nothing could possibly go wrong with that. So... Bloodlust in hand, he sees the end of the game in sight, he rushes forward with his Reke units, puts out his new deployment area outside them, and then puts a bunch of tanks out there right next to him as well. To back up his Carnival of Horrors is a Nebelwerfer battery that is absolutely immense. We kind of went back and forth on that one because he was trying to see if he can't get them all to be hidden behind there. And I pointed out that really if anybody flanks that, they're, they're going to have a perfectly decent shot. However, for myself, leaving on the board, I am incredibly naked. I, I just have the IS-2. Just the commander. I wonder what could be hiding on the board in ambush. Hmm. I wonder where they're going to show up. So in his first turn, he rushes forward, and he's contesting the objective. That's pretty good. In any other situation, this would be mortifying. In fact, I thought this was horrifying. <laughs> Because I, I, this this is so OP. He's he's right there. He's got that spearhead move and uh, okay. So he's contesting the objective, but you know how this goes. I have a unit sitting in ambush. I have the IS twos only because I didn't know when or where the IS twos were going to come up from scattered reserves, and I wanted the commander to at least be close enough that he could you know start you know ninja kicking from one tank to the next to stay alive. And to add insult to injury, he got reserves on the first turn, pulling in his CIC and 2IC. Uh, refrigerator logic, I, I don't know if he could have done that, but I know he could have put them in reserve. And then the ambush pops. The IS-2s come out of the woods, singing some Stalinist workers tune. The Germans just did not know what was coming. It's even too close for a mistaken target, as the IS-2s thunder out of the woods and... You know, it might have been a rate of fire one gun, but it's more like rate of fire fun as they managed to blow away one of the Panzer IVs and bail another. I just love how that thing changes on its head. Usually you expect the, this indomitable tank to be coming out of the German forces, but here I am, front arm, a 10, AT-15, two up firepower with a, with a uh, what is it, breakthrough gun. Uh, they just did not survive. It's just crazy. So we're still in the game. We just came a second away from losing everything because of that spearhead. His Nebelwerfers managed to lay down some smoke in his turn. It's kind of wise. He needs to protect those half-tracks from moving around the corner and give some sort of reprieve for the rest of his tanks because we're just lighting them up. I mean, it's like that scene from Robocop. You know, nee, 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 pow! <laughs> Another tank goes off. It's so good. I love it. 
And as we recall back to the first round of this tourney, he decides to get into a gun duel with the IS-2s. He's got AT-11 versus my friend Armor-10. So, yeah, it's amazing that he manages to bail one of them, though, despite it. I don't correct him. I, I kind of regret that. Maybe it's a sportsmanship thing, just kind of pointing out. Because he, he was less experienced than I was. But I digress. He moves his Reke units forward. He's going to try to dismount. We actually had a back and forth about when they dismount in this version. He ends up having to stay in the half tracks. Another tank dies! <laughs> he gets into a gun duel with the IS-2s at close range. He tries to like divert over to the ARV, but it's just it's too close, right? That's how, that's how it works in this game. You can't do mistaken target. He thinks the smoke is going to protect him. Nope! <laughs> I have the 50 cals on this thing, so it's 12.7. Chugga, 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 chugga. I managed to blow away a couple of them. Uh, well, we didn't blow them away. We, we bailed two of them. And then, you know, the crews don't dismount, which is kind of weird. I, I can't immediately recall if that's the case in version 3. But I can imagine they are soiling their pants. Much like the Panzer IV did, as he decides, eh, there's better places to be than the business end of an IS-2. His infantry do dismount, they begin contesting both objectives. But my one IS-2 there that has been sitting there conveniently in the woods is contesting both, so I, I don't have to worry about anything right now. He moves up his other Panzer IVs, he's trying to get into a gun duel with my IS-2s. It's fun, he's getting closer, I guess. I mean, it begin turning around the IS-2s to take care of the rest of the infantry. I'm, I might assault them. I'm not really too concerned because they're, they all they have is Panzer Voss and Panzer Fricks. They can't really hurt me. Not, not so long as I leave my front armor to them. And in the woods with impetulant consistency, the IS-2s continue to take names and kick ass as they destroy another Panzer IV, bail another that will run away, leaving him with one Panzer IV left. He'd, he's learned. He's got to get to the side of the IS-2s. Well, another platoon of Panzer IVs did show up. He decided not to engage the IS-2s. He's actually running down the hill to the other side of the board. I thought it was weird, but I wasn't going to correct him. And to rub salt in this particular wound, the KV-1s show up from scattered reserves exactly where they need to be. So even though his Panzer IV managed to not do anything to the IS-2, which was a slim chance, now he's got to deal with all the KV-1s at the same time. Oh, joy of joys for that poor Panzer crew. I mean, he's trying to make the best of a really lousy situation, and this is probably the best that he can hope for it. Or at least force me to move in some way and maybe lose raid or something, but I'm not. In fact, I'm just going to let him try to wail on it. Let the KV-1s and IS-2s start peppering the infantry. We're going to try to push them off the objective. We've got two sets of heavy tanks to do it with, so we're going to pick one of them and get it done. And even though the machine guns take their toll on the pioneers, in the assault they manage to repel the KV-1s, getting the two necessary shots, bailing two, and pushing them off. It kind of unfortunate, but I suppose it's it's par for course. I even tried to rope in the other IS-2, but in a surprise he got stuck in the woods. Can't win them all, right? So that left me with an interesting de uh, decision. Do I continue to try to assault with the other IS-2s? They, uh, they can assault what they shot at, try to rope in the CIC and do it. And I said, yeah, okay, why not? So the the commander is actually too far away. He killed everybody that <laughs> he could have charged. And the other guy managed to get stuck in the woods too. Thank goodness there's no bogging in version 4, right? So as his infantry stand is crumbling and he managed to survive miraculously with the other Panzer IV on the other side of the board, he begins moving again, the Panzer IVs, through the middle of the board, out into the middle of nowhere. And I, man, I, I just let him do it. And that's when I ask him, okay, dude, guy, 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 what are you doing? That's where he says, I'm going to go take the objective. I'm going to take this objective. You know, the turn counter. And you can just see the, the color fade from his face. I mean, I felt bad for him, too. He, he had confused the turn counter for an objective piece. And that's when he called. He says, oh, look, there's just nothing I can do. He, I mean, just take a look at this. He's got one Panzer IV, three stands of infantry, versus my entire force, fearless, that are about to remount their tanks. What would you do in this situation? So he called the game. It was an 8-1. And that's been an Ouchie's Bat Rep. And thanks for watching. Just be sure the next time you charge an objective, make sure it's, you know, it's not the turn counter.